Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Restorers. This is part two of the Sony T8 1010 and I've done a few in the past. I think there's still a video from one from 2019 that I still have up on YouTube. Um, and that it's slightly different. That's one thing about these uh, earlier solid state units. The other one looks the same. It had its output capacitors mounted in as you know cans with clamps under the front here rather than on the board it had a 2200 instead of a thousand for the main cap there were little things you know there's design changes so what i've done is i've gone through it recapped all the electrolytics all three boards the main board the uh, preamp tone board and the phono preamp board and so that's these here. So many of them were glued down. And it's funny, I remember the last one, they weren't glued down, but every once in a while I said, Yamaha is bad. I'm, <laughs> early Yamaha is like CA410s, 510s, 610s. Th that line, they love to glue the caps. And you know, you can get, you just don't tear them off because the board will crack because phenolic resin. A little bit, go around with the X-Acto knife, rock it a bit, heat the stuff up because it's basically rubber cement of some type. Be gentle, be patient. The ample sounds so good. It's worth doing that to recap it because it just opens it up. And here's how much things get out of whack. When I first turned this one on, I checked a few things like bias. The bias, was running very, it was running a bit hot actually. And I thought, well, you could readjust it and stuff. No, I will re, I'll check it when I'm done. So I did the power supply, did this board, turned it on, put my meter on it, and you have to be very careful because you can short these transistors. Oh, you have to go right, I put a mark there, B for bias, B for bias, between there and ground. It's what's in the manual. You know, be very careful. A little short and the transistor's gone. Um, these TO66s are getting hard to find. But anyway, I checked the bias after recapping it. It was nearly perfect. Took a little tweeting on this channel. Just a little adjustment. Amazing. The center voltage was right. So this was set up when all the caps were brand new. Hasn't been touched. Everything degrades, goes off value, they go off value. I know the resistors do. They actually use really good resistors. Most of them are silver or gold. So that's 10% or 5% um, variance in their value. So <laughs> I check it after, put it together. It's nearly right on, just a little bit of a tweet. That's really amazing. Um, now what I'm doing now is I'm burning it in. But I can tell you... It seems to me 10 hours is the magic number. If you took this and hook it up to speakers and started listening to it, you say, that's an improvement. But something happens after about 10 hours. It just starts to get better. I know it makes no sense, but it does in an engineering term. I used to work with uh, telephony equipment um, at an engineering level and we used to get into these massive, like talk about like a switch that would have 300 boards in it. You know, and like the boards would do, have different things. They go, one would go into fault, you change the board, you sent it back to Northern Telecom or back to Siemens or back to Philips, that was the other one. Um, you'd get a new board, you'd pull out the package and it would say burn in okay. That meant they burned it in, they ran it in a simulator for 10 hours. That was kind of an assurance that it was going to work. Because believe me, when you have thousands of people without their phone line back in those days, or their high speed internet working because one board's bad, well, you want it to work. Well, I find with this, within about 10 hours, like running it during the day in the shop, you kind of got an idea whether some, you miss something or something um, isn't soldered properly. So that's a, just a little run through on that. 
little unique thing I did with the filter cap. I actually, because it's facing this way, the pins, I took out the 1000 microfarad one, the very, very dried up one, and I put in a 2200, so doubled it. This is where you get the bang for your buck. The first cap in a solid state amp is where you, I mean, it gives you a little deeper well to draw your base from. That's very simple terms, but in those days, a thousand microfarad was this big. To put in a 3300, it was a lot bigger. So now we can put a smaller cap in. So I made a rubber cap to go around the top so it looks nice, put a new label on it. Um, this is one situation where even if you leave all the other caps the same value as original, that's the one that will improve the sound. This is an amp that's going to be basically, it's basically a boulevard cruiser. You know, if you were compared to a vintage car, this isn't a drag strip amp. This is one that you sit back at night and you listen to your favorite music and you just go, man, that's a good album. That thing sounds great. You don't want it too loud. Okay, I sound like an old guy now, right? You don't want it too loud, but you want to be able to hear the bass, treble, the vocals. And this this will be a nice sounding amp. I've had several of these and they are really impressive. Um, they got it right. I mean, compared to current Sony products, which are a mishmash of contracted out junk, um, and I can say that, so much, um, let me put it, low, <laughs> now let's, not, let's do another video on it, okay? This era was the best, okay? If you disagree with me, tell me so. Thanks.